much. Add to it. Welcome back to the student track. Yeah, thank you so much, Mark. So we have our next uh, speakers, Cyrus Wong and Marcus, uh, taking us through empowering educators automated assignment scoring via Azure OpenAI Service ChatGPT. They will be demonstrating how Azure OpenAI Service ChatGPT can be employed for automated assignment assessment, specifically evaluating essays submitted in Microsoft Word and Adobe PDF formats. So Mark, I have some cool things to share about their session. I've been researching about their session and I think, uh, imagine grading 70 lengthy essays in just 10, 10 minutes. Oh, That's uh, less than 10 seconds per essay. I think that is what uh, Cyrus and Marcus will be taking us through. Hi Cyrus, hi Marcus. Hello. Right. Hi. Am I showing the slides? Is it showing at all? Cyrus uh, and Marcus, yeah, I think so. Uh, can you introduce yourself kindly? Right, yeah. So I am Marcus Tang, uh, a student in Ivy Li Wei Li, um, studying cloud data and uh, cloud and data center administration, and also presence is um, Cyrus Wong. Mr. Wong is a senior lecturer, also in Ivy Li Wei Li awarded with Microsoft Most Valuable Professional Award. So, wow. uh, so yeah, we're gonna talk about uh, how Azure OpenAI is gonna help us on, on assignments. But I'm wondering if the presentation is actually showing on the screen. Thank you so much, Marcus. Right, okay. So as I've just mentioned, uh, we're going to talk about how Azure Open AI uh, could help us on automated assignment scoring. Right. So let's let's talk about the uh, the challenge as an educator in Asia. Now, for myself, um, when we go to local schools, or for for most of my time in primary schools, even in secondary school, there was. Uh, a lot of homeworks and and like in uni and it was nearly impossible for myself to submit all the homeworks without sacrificing some spare time for play time or so i refer to self-enhancement time so despite all this homework and assignments i would still go to play all right i ended up not able to hand in all of them or in good quality and this affected my learning. So when students can't learn, teachers get questioned on whether they are doing the job, right? And teacher, and even if the students manage to submit all the homeworks, the teacher will spend a fair amount, if not an equal amount of time sitting down, marking this work uh, for all student submission. And this would create a crazy workload for them just by sitting down. And this is not an ideal teaching. They've got a life as well. Maybe they would rather spend the time on improving their skills or creating a fun and interactive class. And in turn, it becomes less fun and poor educational experience for students like myself. So this is our solution. It is to utilizing AI technology, employing tech such as uh, Azure OpenAI Surface, ChatGPT, to assist us on automated grading tasks. This AI demonstrates consistent and reliable reasoning in processing capabilities, uh, delivering impressive results and in automated, automatic assignment uh, evaluation. And furthermore, it can analyze student responses, providing valuable insights to help enhance their learning experience. Not only we could analyze their work performance uh, as well as um, their assignment results. 
Right, so this is a screenshot um, from Studio, uh, Visual Studio Code for of students' assignments. Uh, so far, we are testing only on uh, receiving, re receiving and processing two types of assignments. They could either be Word documents or PDF files. Right, so what we are looking at here, uh, this is all written in Python, as you, if you're familiar with them. So for work document submission, so prior to the processing, uh, processing submitted work from students, we need to extract text from the submission. So we use docs to text library to confer, uh, library contents from Word, co convert the word into something called the Panda film then we could process their work. So situation-wise, uh, we're also aware that students may and some teachers prefer PDF file submission to prevent alteration. Hence, we will also be analyzing PDF files. So we, similar to Word Docs, we use a PyPDF2 library to extract the contents from the PDF files and again, convert, I put them into P, uh, Panda films, then we could process the work. Right, so we then pass this Assure OpenAI surface to analyze, to evaluate students' answer. We will talk about the detailed explanation on how we analyze the prompts in later slides. So what we are looking at here uh, is the source code for um, opening the Azure OpenAI portal. It is a relative simple coding. We simply open Azure OpenAI and create a project in order to use LLM individually for each assignment uh, submission. If we look at a function here, get JSON ChatGPT, we pass the prompt in and the student number ID, and then we fetch and open the Azure OpenAI using the chat completion API create here. Now this code can all be found on Microsoft OpenAI. It's very comprehensive and easy to generate. Right, so this is source code for checking students work after opening uh, the Azure OpenAI portal, AI, AI, AI portal. We input the converted documents um, from the from the students, from the previous functions and see if they fit the requirements. So this is where the checking been done. And then we called for the marking scheme, which we will also show you in later slides, to follow it, students' answers, and then we output it on an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, what we need to tell we tell the AIs that we need to help it understand what their role is. And this case would be a teacher, so it would know what the um, expected output is. So how, how do we wrap up students and mark up the submission? We created a guideline for prompts for ChatGPT to follow using the prompt engineering technique. Uh, so the machine would go through step by step and generate an ideal teaching feedback. Hence, we need to code a simple set of codes for AI auto marking. Uh, we, have, we set up prompt for marking Rubik. Uh, the marking Rubik includes like token usage and the accuracy evaluation. And basically, we want the AI to act as a teacher, give marks and comments for student submission to enhance with uh, we'll add clear syntax by presenting, by specifying a delimiter uh, and injecting students answer, which will, uh, then we also initiate to start with clear instructions by presenting the marking rubric, which we'll also show you in the next slide, if not in the later slides, it'll be easier for me to explain to you guys as well. Right, so this is the core content. This part is properly the most important part of this presentation. So bear with me, all right. Um, as I've just mentioned, we need the AI to understand what the role is. 
So yes, we we use ChatGPT, but it's not as simple as oh, I've asked a question and it's going to answer me, and that's it. It's not just that; it is a logical engine. Follow your lead, your analyze, extract, 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 and provide feedback. Hence, we need to personalize it. Also, because each student submission will be different. So normally, when a student from my school, from VTC Liu Li, completed their internship uh, from a real workplace experience, we would ask this set of questions like, "Oh, what's the job responsibility? What was what's about? What's the future career path, etc." So we've tried to be as detailed as possible here. All these questions, then we fit this into ChatGPT in order to personalize um, it individually, so the feedback would be more suitable and feasible. So ChatGPT will understand when students was uh, submit their documents, what the answers are referring to, and these answers would be like, oh, it is referring to this and that question, so be all. Be in order, right? So, what we're looking at here is the um, the marking scheme, part of marking scheme. The answers part here will be replaced by the converted documents what the student submitted, and based on the submitted work, will the ChatGPT will score it based on these eight questions. So each question is worth like. Ten marks like job responsibility, workplace experience, what they've learned, uh, some comments, uh, job evaluation from the, the colleagues, uh, future career path, uh, formats. And if we look at the bottom part here, uh, copy from the internet uh, scale from zero to one is to measure the likelihood of um, whether the students copy the answers from the internet and generative AI likewise is also measure, measuring the likelihood of if the answer they submit to docu the documents were actually gen by another AI, right? Now, comments is, uh, as I've just mentioned in the previous slide, the comment section is kind of special. It is not a fixed or anticipated text, uh, que the question would be like, oh, it's not like what the job is, and I could say, it, and I could tell you my job is students. It's not that, it's a freestyle writing. So it need a little bit more specific rule on how the AI would mark this kind of questions. So we employ prom uh, engineering techniques. So comments underlies chains of thought prompting COT codes, an approach that, that encourage the MLM to break down uh, this complex thought into shorter, into immediate steps, in, intermediate steps by providing a few uh, demonstrations to the MLM. So it breaks down into short length. So they break down into shorter parts for analysis. Um, so we emphasize that the comment section, how they how they provide feedback on this question should, should be encouraging because teaching should be fun. It should be positive. Students shouldn't be penalized for something wrote freely. And if we look down in here, in from the fifth section onwards, it is the format section. So for the formatting rule, um we want the A was, was what we want gen, uh, AI to generate. So we want the AI to generate JSON format and reply us in JSON because it is uh, smart enough to follow our instruction to convert the result into JSON file. It is important to have JSON file because when JSON file can be passed back to Python, then we could read it back to the database for further analysis and for further functions. So the marking scheme, right. So what we emphasize here is that 
when we all when we call for the chat GPT portal, it may return invalid JSON uh, by dis disregarding the instruction to not including anything. So this is referring to the settings in the first function when we call for OpenAI and it could malfunction. So to address this issue, uh, a retry me mechanism uh, has been implemented, such as the altering the um, parameters such as temperature, because having a high temperature could result in fancy word and less coherent to what the question is about. Right, so this is the sample output. I believe the screen is not showing correctly. Right, so my minor, minor technical issue. So right now it was showing that the AI has managed to distinctively distinguish two work submission. So for the first submission, it scored a relatively high high mark, actually four marks. So it, may, it could tell the students, oh, you did a great job. Your answer is well structured. So keep it a good work. And for the less outstanding work for 48 marks, you could also have a distinctive feedback to the students saying, oh, this is a well-written reflective journal, uh, the overall, the individual has shown a positive attitude towards their career path. So, right. As uh, as we have just mentioned, we could, oh, again, it's not showing correctly. So what this slide is about is about, um, we try to detect if the works, so students and missed works are similar and whether they copy from the internet. So we, integrated and in-depth answer analysis, also using Azure Open AI embedding. So we try to detect whether the student's work is a distinctive piece of work, not fair, sorry, not similar to the other works. Um, so we could use embedding to calculate similarities in answers. So how we do it is that we embed it, convert it, documents, which is the answer, into factor points. So factor points like a geolocation on a Google map where the point is describing uh, the location. So then this on this occasion, we'll be convert, converting them into factor points on charts to measure and this, um, to calculate the similar similarities between the points, the factor points. So embedding is a special format of data presentation that can be easily utilized by machine learning. So each embedding is a factor of floating points that's such that the distance between the two embeddings in a factor point is correlated with semantic similarity between two inputs in the same original formats. So as you can imagine, if the two submitter works are similar or literally the same, the two factor points would have a relatively short distance. Right, so how, how do we do it? Uh, we group this data into seven groups uh, here and clusters. Using the clustering technical, K means cl clustering. So clustering is a technique uh, methodology uh, to group them into smaller groups, small circles, hence clusters cluster of groups, cluster of circles. And we calculate the similarity of these circles and based on distance, how far they are. So the clustering technique groups students with relatively similar answers into a single cluster, uh, which assists us in identifying problematic cases with similar size groups. So as you can see here, we used a text embedding model, ADA v2 version 2, uh, to embed all similar answers to find out if students copied and paste from each other. So as much as we discourage students to uh, from aiding themselves from copying from ChatGPT and others, we don't want to simply uh, copy them. So we want to analyze how much and how similar this order through this information from this information. So Python library again, 
to visualize the results. So this code, um, they have input uh, built-in modules for plotting different graphs in Python. Right, so this is the uh, the source code comparing the um, the clusters and highlighting the results. So we use a TE distributed stochastic neighbor embedding, uh, TSNE. It is a tool to visualize uh, high dimensional data. It converts similarities between uh, data points to join probabilities uh, and tries to minimize uh, the divergence between the joined probabilities. Quite technical. So, since we're using, using clustering technique, it only makes sense to see the seven crosses. So this is simple, uh, referring to the seven groups. Right. So 2D diagrams, like a chart from previous, are great, but it's getting boring nowadays. So therefore, we implemented um, a principal component analysis, uh, PCA for visualizing and embedding and custom results. So PCA is a linear dimensional, let's say, reduction using singular value decomposition. Uh, decomposition. So in simpler terms, 3D graphs. Right. So this is this is the graph on explain variance ratio over number of components per cluster, if I remember correctly. So nothing nothing is wrong with this uh, exponential red line rate. In fact, it should look like this because the more difference in in a group, the more the higher the variance should be as as the line is the number of components increase. So this is a good line, right? So this is the source code for the three D graph. So we then plot this into a three D graphs. Okay. So honestly, the next page baffles me a bit. So just bear with me. All right. Voila. Now, let me explain this graph. This is very intriguing. So obviously, you're seeing a lot of names here. These names are the students. They submitted the work, so they will be appear on this 3D graphs for comparison. So as Mr. Wong have told me before, there will be outliers such as uh, these two students here. It's very potentially that they did not submit the work or they have submitted empty work. So if you look at this cluster of names, the closer the name is, um, the more similar they are, implying they may have written similar terms or in a more straightforward description would be, they have copied from each other or from AI. So these groups are classified, cluster, the clustering mark would be the color before the name. So now, if you're interested, we could share this link. It's on YouTube, uh, based the wall describing um, a Chopin AI, but we will not be playing this today. So as a conclusion, if you are a quick learner and familiar with uh, the system, you could down your exhausting marking period from few days to 10 minutes. So we still want to try this and he marked using this system have and regraded seven students, seven T students, seven zero in less than 10 minutes. So in this presentation, we show you how, uh, about how it is more ideal for uh, the teaching environments for both students and teachers. And teacher could mark assignment, assignments in a much faster pace using AI and spend the time on teaching and on more important tasks such as enhancing teaching. So as we are also, we've mentioned how to utilize embedding, uh, to, we are able to gain federal insights where the, how, how similar students' works are, et cetera, et cetera, and in turn allow us 
to understand the thought process, the knowledge levels, and areas that may require additional support or instruction. Right, that'd be the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening, guys. Thanks, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Hi, thank you so much, Marcus. That was so informative. I actually thought that I was good at prompt engineering only to find out there was a <laughs> large prompt over there. And I was like, wow. So how did you start writing or uh, evaluating such a long prompt? It's still mute, Mr. Wong. Cyrus, we can't hear you. Still yeah, nothing. Can, yeah, still nothing. Try checking your setup, your microphone setup. Still, still nothing. I'm sorry, Cyrus. Marcus, could right. you maybe take up the question? How do you yeah. start writing or evaluating such long prompts? Oh, I, of course, obviously, I didn't finish the whole thing myself. I was under uh, the uh, super okay. guidance of uh, sorry, supervision of Mr. Wong. As I've mentioned, he is a MVP in, in Microsoft. He also specializes in Azure. Um, I was basically touching up the uh, Python codes and and making the graphs, I'm, I'm, yeah. The technical part of converting the lab. The, like, oh, as I mentioned, the, um, the converting of library that, that's actually built in. So calling in the uh, open AI and adjusting the parameters was not actually that difficult. If you actually spend the time, uh, it's actually quite easy to handle. But I think the uh, to generate the graphs was much harder, like after a, we get the JSON file from the ChatGPT. That's the hard part. And yeah. I think Mr. Wong is better in explaining yeah. that. Uh, uh, but can you hear me? Is it still? Yeah, okay? we could hear you now. Yep, yep. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I, I just talk. I just talk the by GoPro. Just use the P one. Yeah. Um. Basically, this is something very Sorry, interesting. Sorry, Cyrus, trying to speak. Hello. 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 Yeah. Hello. Yeah, okay, hear. okay. So oh, as you wait for I Cyrus, I have another question. Maybe if you can take it up since Cyrus isn't uh, here. Right. What did you use to store your vectors or embeddings? Uh, hello, hello. Yep. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you, Mr. Wong. Oh, hi, Cyrus. Yeah. Yes, finally, we can hear you. OK, um, right. Marcus, we, we have Yeah. So we, I think, let me, let me refer to the slides, so on. Oh, OK, OK. So after we convert them, I think we, how do we do it? it was slide. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yep, yep. Ah, yep, Mr. One, Wong. Okay. Yeah, were, well, were... uh, I, I know the question is about we don't need database for this project. Since this is just a simple, simple Jupyter notebook, we just directly calculate the, the, the data. Uh, in Jupyter Notebook, since the dimension is, is high, but the number of students say is about 100 something or 200 something, so we don't use any special database to handle the calculation. We just do everything in Python. Hello? Hello? It's okay? Yep. Yeah, okay. Did you guys. 
uh, markers. Yep. Uh, let's skip that question. We can answer it later on the chat section. And can you answer like one question from the uh, from the chat section that is asking, can we find any notes about your findings online? Right. Sorry, I'm not seeing the question, but um, we we're, we're happy to answer how we handle the other factor points. So um, there was no there's no no database. We just handle everything. It may seem a lot, but we just handle everything in the uh, in the Python. Um, perhaps we need a larger database. Well, of course, this time it's only 70 students. So everything was able to ma manage and handle using Python. There's no special database. Um, as for the next question, where where's the next question? Sorry. Uh, I think that was the questions that is there. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much, Cyrus and Marcus. Although we had some technical hinges with you, Cyrus, we really apologize for that. <laughs> yeah, thank you for, uh, yeah, thank you for. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. You're welcome. Yeah.